Welcome to this optimized press training. If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking of ways on how you could best market your services or products online through websites. Now, for anyone who's ever tried to market online, you'll probably be familiar with landing pages or squeeze pages. And if you're using a content management system like WordPress, um, it's not easy to design this yourself. You know, even if you think about the fact that landing pages are very simple, if you want to design this yourself from the ground up, it is not an easy thing to do. So with that being said, there are options out there to make this process a lot easier. The one I'm going to be talking about is Optimize Press, but there are other options out there like Lead Pages and also uh, Get Response. Now, the difference between these is what I'm showing you right here. With Optimize Press, this is a one-time fee. So you could pay for the core package the publisher or the pro and the primary differences between these is how many websites you can use this license on and also uh, the support that you get with it as well now for lead pages you do have to pay a monthly fee which is $25 and the same goes for get response now the difference between these lead pages is primarily made just to design landing pages and squeeze pages but get response not only does it have that but it also has an email management system where you could actually collect emails and so forth. And that would take care of it. That's very similar to AWeber and also MailChimp as well. This is for email marketing. So the reason why I chose Optimize Press, and this is the one that I use myself, is for the fact that this one doesn't have a monthly fee and it gives you a lot of control over your websites in terms of how you want to design and use these landing pages now for both lead pages and optimized press the landing pages their squeeze pages they're not hosted on your website they're actually hosted on their websites and so you don't have quite as much control um, however they are really easy to use and they don't require as many technical skills as it would with Optimize Press. Now, that's not to say that Optimize Press is only for techies. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is really easy to use. However, if you've never designed a website before uh, or use a content management system like WordPress, some of this could be, you know, kind of challenging at first. So, Optimize Press is primarily made for people who have had some experience creating websites or using a content management system like WordPress. So, right now, this is a fresh install on WordPress, so typically your websites are not going to have anything. You know, it's going to have like a default page that looks something like this. Um, so it's just going to have a Hello World website, so nothing much there. So whenever you do purchase Optimize Press and you get the license keys installed, what you're going to see is you're going to see it available under your themes right here. And so we'll go ahead and just activate it. And once it's activated, you're going to have these options for Optimize Press. Now, there are a lot of options available on Optimize Press. And so I'm going to just go over some of the main pieces that you would use and some of the tools that might help you. So whenever you start off initially, it's going to come to the blog setup page. And this will take you through like a step-by-step -step guide. So this is if you just want to get started quickly and you don't want to take a lot of time going through all the settings and designing it so this is great if you just want to get started quickly however you could also go to the create new page and this is where it's going to give you a lot more options so if you see up here they you have some options on the type of pages you want to create and I'm going to go through each section and these are basically templates that Optimize Press has already included for you so let's go ahead and start with the very first section, which is opt-in and landing pages. Now, this is if you want to design an opt-in landing page, and this is the majority of what people use Optimize Press for, and you can actually preview it. So let's go ahead and preview this one right here, and you'll kind of understand what type of landing page is there. You see right there, very simple. And so let's look at another one. And these opt-in landing pages, they're primarily made for one thing. They're primarily made to collect emails so if you clicked on there see you would collect emails right there and so optimize press has a variety right there and if you go down further uh, most of these templates there are all made for the optimum opt-in and landing pages but if you go down further there's also thank you pages as well and you would primarily use this if 
they registered, a customer registered on your website, and you would send them to a thank you page right afterwards. So that's a very nice professional touch. And if you keep on going further, there are also sales pages built in too, in case you wanted to sell products like ebooks. So this one right here is an ebook template. So you could buy it now or download it. And all these templates, all of these designs, they've been tested by marketers. And so these actually work and they convert really well. It's just up to you to put in the content and also the products that you want to sell. And also you would have to put the links on there to go to wherever your products or services are located. So as you go down further, it gets to more complex features such as the webinar pages. So if you had a webinar type service, you could actually promote it right here and have people sign up for your webinars. And the same thing goes for membership pages. You might have like a video course that you want to sell and this will allow you to create membership pages, you know. So another excellent feature that you could have. And also you could create your own pages from the ground up. This is for more advanced people. So if they don't want to use the template and they want to build everything from the ground up, they could do that as well. And there is another final feature which is launch funnel pages this is for more advanced marketers and so this is for people who have pre-sales pages or pre-sales services and they want to do a launch type campaign on there so you can use that as well so this is the one that I would recommend once you get used to it so you have more control over here so let's go over the other sections now the dashboard this is like the global settings on how you set it up so once that loads up okay here Here's the header and logo setup. So this is, if you had like a logo, you could actually upload it right here and your logo will show up like right there. Okay. Now the next part is a favicon. And what a favicon is, is this thing right here. That's a favicon. So with that particular feature, you could upload your own favicon on your website. And then the site footer, it's very self-explanatory. It's actually the copyright information. So if you go here, you will see your copyright right down there. And you could change that as you'd like as well, whatever the text says down at the bottom. And these SEO options, I would just leave that on. If you're not familiar with SEO, just leave that on. For people who are more advanced, they're probably not using this anyway. So these are auto sale features. Now the promotion settings, this allows you to promote optimized press right here. But you can also sign up as an affiliate and earn income through promoting optimized press, which is a nice feature. Now this is actually for more advanced users. So if you know programming or you have a web developer on your team, you could do this and you could customize the CSS styling on your whole website. And here's your typography for fonts and so forth. And once again, this is for more advanced users. And this is where you would put your API key, your license key from WordPress. Now, there are other options down here, but I would just leave these pretty much as the default unless you are familiar with those features that I just talked about. Okay, so now you have your analytics and tracking. Once again, this is for more advanced users. Say that you had Google Analytics on there or you might have tracking codes say like for your Facebook as well, you could add those on there. Now the email marketing services, that's a very important part. So as I stated earlier, if you were using an email marketing service like GetResponse, Aweber, or MailChimp, there will be a key, an API key, or that you could put in here. And for some of them, it's not an API key, it might be called something else, API connection. So whatever the case might be, this allows you to easily connect with your preferred email marketing service. And then there's also a social integration, but it's really only for Facebook right now. So these would be your global settings and you would really only set this the first time. And every now and then you might make, need to make changes, but this is primarily for the first time setup. Now let's go ahead and go to blog settings. And um, this is, once again, this is probably not something that you're going to do every time, but there is a simpler one 
the one that I showed you earlier, the block setup, we'll get to that in a bit. But this is a little more detailed if you want to have more control and you don't want to go through the step-by-step -step process. So if you want to set this up as your primary blog site, you could do that. And let me show you what that means. So I just activated the Optimize Press theme. So if I refresh it right now, see, it'll just show this right now. And so you can use Optimize Press two ways. You can use it as a theme, which is what I'm doing here. So that means your whole website is going to be an optimized press theme website. Or you could use it as a plugin. So what that means is you already have a WordPress theme that you like and you don't want to override that design, but you still want to use the optimized press landing pages and squeeze pages and all those other pages that I showed you. And so you just want to use it as a plugin. So you could do that as well. It's your choice. So let's go through this real quick. So I'm going to choose this style. Okay. So the brand here, you could set up a blog header just as I started about earlier, your Fabicon. You could adjust the settings, the color settings, the copyright and typography. And that's very similar to the whole global settings as well that you saw a little earlier. Now the layout structure, meaning that how you want to lay out your web page, like the default is it's going to have a right column right here. Uh, and you see what I mean once I set that up. And you could also set up header navigation preferences, like how do you want your header to look like, where do you want to put your links and so forth. And then your footer preferences, this is going to be the lower area of your website. So you could adjust that as well. And here we get to modules. So the home page feature area, I'm going to show you this right now. Right now, I don't have it. Optimize Press as my blog, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and I'm going to show you what it means. So let's go ahead and save that. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back to our web page and let's refresh this. And now it'll look a little bit different. So now it's set up with Optimize Press as your whole blog theme for your website. So let's go back to the modules. So let's turn this home page feature on and you see what it has. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and refresh it. So now there's a home page feature area right here. So here you could actually add a video if you like and also a little portion right here where you could collect emails. So I'm not going to go through all the details of that. Okay, so you go back to the modules. And you can also turn on an advertising. And I'm going to go through most of these one by one so you can kind of see how that looks like on your website. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And now, well, you don't see it here, but what that means is you could actually add some advertising here so if you had some like services additional service you want to sell you could have that right there okay let's go back to modules again and you also have a sidebar opt-in which means that you could also collect emails on the side and your sharing options as well you know sharing like for social media and so forth and for each one of these modules or services, if you need help, what is great about Optimize Press, they'll usually have a nice little uh, video help that comes up explaining everything for you step by step in case you forget. Um, and sometimes it takes a little while to load because that is coming up from their website, but you get the idea there. And so, okay, I'm going to turn that on. Now, the related post box is if you have this set up as a blog. It can have related posts on the right, meaning posts that you've had or recent posts. So people could continue reading on other posts that you had. And then also here's your comment system. If you do want to allow comments. And this is for more advanced users. You could add additional CSS coding there. And the continue reading links just means that if whenever they're looking at your blog, and let's go ahead and save this and refresh it. Whenever they go to your blog, there will be an option to continue reading, which is right there. 
So it looks bare right now, but you kind of get the idea. So you can customize it the way you like. And if you were more advanced, you could build this from the ground up. Okay. So if you didn't want to go through all these detailed steps, you could always go to the blog setup, which was actually the default that you saw at the very beginning. And so this will get you started really quick. And it goes through all those options I just mentioned earlier, except it's by a step-by-step -step process, making it easier for you to get your site up and running. Now, let's go down to the page builder. And if you did create a web page, this is what you would have if you wanted to go through the step-by-step -step process. If you remember at the beginning, I showed you a create a new page feature where you could just choose the template that you want. And just like the blog setup feature, this page setup feature is more for people who just want to get started quickly and don't want to go through all the details. And so I'm going to leave that there. So let's go ahead and uh, create one. Maybe not through this, but let's go through the create new page. Okay. We'll close this. And I'll show you how a page looks like. Because I feel like if you go through the create new page instead of using the quick setup, you will probably learn a lot more of the details of how things work. And I also find it simpler in some cases. So let's just go ahead with this quick login page real quick. We'll just use this one. Let's use this template. And I'm going to call this test. Okay. You could... and. You could always check the availability, like say for example you had a lot of web pages, you don't remember whether or not you used this name before, it would check it for you. So let's go ahead and create the page. And what Optimize Press is doing is using its feature called Live Editor, and it basically it's a graphical user interface tool, drag and drop. And so here, every single piece is like a little block of code. Um, I mean there is coding underneath it, but it makes it real easy for you to add things and modify it. Let's say, for example, let's go ahead and I want to modify this test, this text right here. Let's put test in there so then you can see what I'm talking about. So, we'll put test. Okay. And then you'll go down here and you just insert it. Okay. And as you can see, it has like a real time editor so you can see your changes. And then let's go ahead and save this and continue. Say OK. And then you could also view this page. And there you go. That's how it would look once it's online. Now, um, one thing I do want to mention is um, in order for you to see your pages live, meaning not the preview that you just saw, you actually have to publish your page first. So what you would do, you would go to pages, then find the page that you just created. And uh, make sure that you click on publish. Okay, I've already done that. But when you click on publish, now if you actually go to your website, you know, whatever site you just created, in this case test, you go to your website and then slash whatever page it was, it'll show up. Otherwise, it won't show up. So be sure you uh, do that first. Make sure you come to your pages and then uh, click on uh, publish. And that will make it live. So that's it for the introductory course on using Optimize Press. Hope you got a lot of value out of that. And if you wanted to purchase Optimize Press for your own websites or services, be sure to click on the link below and it'll take you to Optimize Press's page. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the very next course.